Hi guys, hope you're all doing well and this will be the second video that I will be creating for Azure ADB to be collaboration and uh, the agenda for this particular video will be knowing about what is user type. So by default, whenever you add any user in your directory, that particular user is added as guest and you can change it to member and uh, the users that you have manually created in your directory that by default the status that we get uh, that is assigned to that particular user is a member and again you can change it to guest as well and both the process can be done from PowerShell. The second thing that we are going to talk about will be the source status. So this is basically an attribute or a property you can say which we can check on portal.azure.com once we navigate to a particular user and this does get changed when you invite a user. So when you, whenever you are, whenever you have added a guest user, the status that you will see over there as invited user. That means an invitation is being sent, but yet that has not been redeemed by the particular invited user. The moment that user will accept the request, then you will see to which IDP that particular user account belongs to. This means what? If it is an external Azure Active Directory account or if it is a Microsoft account. So this does get changed, which I will be showing in the demo as well. The third thing that we are going to talk about will be the conditional access. That means how you can create conditional access policies for guest user. So by default, the process that we were using about uh, that we were using before that creating conditional access policy as per groups, that is something for sure, which is available. You can create a group. You can add all the guest users into that particular group, and then you can implement a guest uh, user conditional access policy. But there is a slight change, which is there in preview, which I will be showing you guys that now there is a specific option of all guest users that can be checked. And by default, the conditional access policy will be scoped for all the guest user because that policy is something which actually checks for the user type. And uh, the conditional access uh, policy change that we are going to implement will be MFA for guest user. So for whenever a guest user will try to access any of the resources or a particular application, they should be prompted for MFA. So this will also let you know how does the MFA process works for guest users. And lastly, the things, uh, uh, lastly, the last part that we are going to cover will be the authentication. So all of this and how does the authentication process will work. So this will also include getting the user enrolled for MFA, getting the conditional access policy triggered and how does the claims are getting exchanged between two different directories and how the user is getting logged in. So in this video, since everything will be uh, uh, available from the portal itself, everything will be shown on the portal. So I'm switching to portal now and I have uh, logged in into Azure Active Directory and I've just clicked on users. The first list that you see here will be a list of all the users which are there in the directory. And the third column will be of user type. That means this particular user is, is guest or member. As I said before, that this is something which can be changed from PowerShell. So what I'll do now is I'll open PowerShell and we'll try to change the guest user listed here into a member object. That means what? The current status for this particular user is a guest the user's type is showing as guest and we'll change it to member so the command that you can use to make this change will be set up an msol user have an user principal name the upn of the user and then user type member the moment you will execute this command wait for at least 30 40 seconds or in fact one minute as well because it takes some time to get this reflected and then what you can do is you can close all this refresh the web page and now again go ahead and check for the status for that particular user and it should be now member so the guest user object that we used for which we have changed the member type now it should be member instead of guest and as you can see here that we are getting member now this the same process can be done for member objects converting them into the guest users so you can change from guest to member and from member to guest depending upon your requirements the next thing that we are going to talk about would be the conditional access and the mfa but uh, before that 
uh, I would like to discuss something and that is that in my previous video I have shown you how you guys can add users at three different level directory application and group but for this demo what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a I'm going to add a user directly at the application level not at the directory because there is a reason behind that that let's consider a scenario wherein a user doesn't have a mailbox so if you will follow the process of adding the user in the directory by default they will get a mail and then they have to accept that email accept that invitation request and then they are added to the directory but in case where the user doesn't have a mailbox what you what you can do is you can directly add that particular user at that application once the user will go to that application link the application will redirect the user to login.microsoftonline.com the moment user lands on login.microsoftonline.com then the redemption process will get started and the invitation once the invitation process is completed the user will get the access to the application and that particular user will be added as a guest user in, the, in this directory as well so I'll repeat the complete process once again that if you are trying to invite a user that doesn't have a mailbox what you can do is you can assign or you can add that user directly at the application level and that user will be able to accept the invitation and I'll show you how so the application that I'm going to use in this uh, particular demo will be an open ID connect test app that I have added and I'm going to send the invitation to my user the guest user that belongs to a different directory which is uh, cloudappsecurity.microsoft.com and I've also added my custom message that please accept this invitation now the only difference between adding a user at the directory level and at the application level is that when you add a user at the directory level what you might need to do is that you have to manually assign the application for which that particular user requires access but if you add a user at the application level what will happen that by default the assignment for that particular user will get completed so as you have observed that I got a prompt here which says the guest user is invited and now that particular user is selected as well the moment I will click on select I will get the option to assign this application now this application is assigned to the guest user that I have invited but irrespective of which level you use either global sorry either the directory group or application the moment you will navigate to the user settings what you will see is that particular object getting listed as a guest now this is a guest user that belongs to a different directory and in the source you see here invited user over here itself you will get uh, option wherein you can resend this uh, invitation request to the guest user, the guest user if for some reason he or she has not accepted the request or on time or the invitation uh, link is expired now the next process the next step that we are going to do is we are going to try logging in into the application open id connect application with this particular id and let's see how it goes so this is my application that i'm going to use and here the fiddler will start uh, for this particular authentication attempt but in order to show you guys more uh, information for this particular demo what i have done is i have configured a conditional access policy which says mfa should be done for the user so before we go ahead and check for the entire authentication Let's go ahead and check for that conditional access policy and then we'll see the step-by-step -step process that is happening and how does the invitation process is completed for this particular user. So this is the conditional access policy that I have created. The application which is scoped, uh, that means for this particular application, there should be an MFA which is Open ID Connect. The users that uh, is selected are all guest users so this was the particular option that I was referring to which has been introduced lately and over here itself you can select all guest user now the MFA will be done for any guest user that is trying to access this particular 
application now let's go back to the application and as well as fiddler trace so this is my application and fiddler now the moment i will click on sign in there will be three process that will be happening the first one will be the invitation process that will get initiated the moment uh, i will try signing in the second process that will be completed will be mfa and the third process which the third change in fact which you will see is the source getting changed from invited user to external azure active directory so the moment i will click on sign in what i see is the authentication request that's been sent to login.microsoftonline.com and in fact the directory where i have added this particular application now what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the account the guest account that i have added so this is the test account uh, that i have added and i'll click on next now i'll type my password and i'll click on sign in now what you see here is invitation.microsoft.com though i tried accessing the application the direct link of the application with the guest invited account but the invitation process is started now which is asking me to accept and consent invitation.microsoftonline.com sorry invitation.microsoft.com to go ahead and read some of the information which requires my profile information so the moment i'll click on accept now the next thing that should get initiated will be the process of mfa that means now this should ask me to go ahead and register for mfa and that's exactly what's happening right now now the moment i will click on next i will register for authentication method that i will be using for a second factor which in this case i'm going to use a mobile app now let me set up this mfa and once this mfa is completed i will be landed back to application now once uh, the mfa is completed what i'm getting now is the consent which application requires so these are the four consent which application requires in terms of reading the information that are associated with my profile the moment i will click on accept i will be landed back to the application and that too with the guested guest invited user now the next thing that i'm going to check will be what is the source status for this particular user now and for that what i'll do is i'll switch back to azure active directory and go ahead and check that what what we are getting for source now i have switched back to portal and what i see here is external azure active directory because the user has accepted the request in the form of getting direct access to the application and i'm no longer getting the option of recent invitation so this user that didn't have a mailbox and uh, we tried uh, providing him an application link which he or she has used and now he's logged in to that particular application as well as getting uh, getting as for the process added as a guest in my directory now the next thing that i wanted to discuss which is very important and that is the M the mfa of the user now for that what you need to do is you have to go ahead and check that whether where exactly the mfa information is registered for the user now this user belongs to a directory which is cloud app security dot on microsoft dot com but the guest user is invited to a directory named as lab poc dot on microsoft dot com now understand this that the conditional access policies are getting initiated from labpoc.onmicrosoft.com so the directory where the information for mfa in this particular case will be registered where the guest user is invited so now what do i mean by this that labpoc.onmicrosoft.com has invited a guest user from cloudappsecurity.onmicrosoft.com but it's labpoc.onmicrosoft.com the first directory which needs mfa okay so the object that the guest user object that will be created in labpoc.onmicrosoft.com will be 
holding the information for MFA. So if you run this command, which says get hyphen MS all user hyphen the UPN of the guest user that you have invited, and if you will check for strong authentication method, what you will see is that this particular user has used phone app notification method to be or to go ahead and check or to complete MFA. Now there is a specific reason why it is not happening at the directory where the user object exists. That means uh, cloud app security home directory because the information that user might have used for uh, a directory where he or she has been added as a guest can be different from information what he is using in his or her home directory. So if there is a partner or if there is a uh, employee of your company that has been added to four different directories as a guest user every directory can hold a different MFA method and different MFA details I'll summarize this again that whenever a guest user is invited the directory who is or which is inviting the guest user that holds the MFA data because this could be directory specific and application specific as well depending upon what user has choose while getting enrolled for MFA so this was all about how things are working in terms of conditional access and MFA now let me switch to Fiddler and explain you guys how what exactly happened uh, when the user tried logging into the application. So the, this is the link of my application which de redirected the user to login.microsoftonline.com at the OAuth authorized endpoint where the invitation.microsoft.com has consented the user because uh, the user has not uh, accepted the invitation uh, from my email. We are just accessing that particular link of the application and that's why the invitation process has started so this means what this is something that can be used to send an invitation to a user who doesn't have a mailbox now once that invitation process is completed the next thing that got started would be the mfa that means i've been redirected to mfa portal to get my account registered and here once the MFA is completed, the proof of is completed for, for the user. Now I redirected back to application wherein I consented the application to access the information or to access a set of claims which are required. And then I'm, I'm again logged in back to my application. So this is the authentication process, how it is, how it is working. And again, just to summarize, that the MFA details for that particular user will only be saved or will only be listed in the directory who has invited the guest user. Now let's switch back uh, to our presentation and let's talk about a quick summary about what all we discussed. We discussed about user type. It could be the guest or a member that can be changed by a PowerShell. We talked about source status. That when you invite a user that will be invited user when the user will accept the invitation it will change to either external Azure Active Directory or Microsoft account or depending upon the directory from where you have invited the user we have also checked the conditional access that now there is a specific option that you can use which is all guest user and that actually checks the user type uh, whether this particular user is a member or a guest and then it triggers the conditional access with the help of the same conditional access policies what we tried is we tried uh, configuring MFA for the user and we have also checked how does the MFA works for a user and after all this we also checked the fiddler trace the complete fiddler trace of how the entire process of sending an invitation to a user instead of email asking them to directly log in onto the application and then they land up to login.microsoftonline.com the invitation process will get started the MFA will get completed and then the users will land back to the application so this was all about this particular video there will be one more video the last video that i will be creating for b2b collaboration and in that i would try to go ahead and address how the self-service portal works and if you guys have any questions please feel free to reach me at learnsconceptwork at gmail.com
thank you so much guys thanks for your time and have a great day ahead bye bye